Plants' role in human life. Although you may not think about it, plants play an important role in your life. Besides being a major source of the oxygen that you breathe, plants are an important source of food and spices, medicine, fibers for clothing, paper, and rope, rubber, fuel, and of course, pleasure. Plants are the main source of our food, both as direct food sources and as feed for animals. Although genetically modified foods may seem like a modern invention, humans have been genetically altering plants through selective breeding for over 10,000 years. Currently, about 2,000 species of plants are cultivated for food. About 40 are considered major food sources and 80% of calories consumed by humans worldwide come directly or indirectly from six types of cultivated plants. Wheat, rice, maize, potatoes, sweet potatoes, and manioc. Here you see dandelions. Uh, dandelions and many other wild food, wild plants are sources of food including honey mesquite, wild violets, and even Believe it or not, stinging nettles, if you cook them, they taste a lot like spinach. Plants are also important sources of spices and herbs. Oils for cooking, like canola oil, palm oil, and olive oil, as you see here. Uh, beverages, here you see one of my favorites, coffee. Uh, also tea, herbal tea, and uh, even alcoholic beverages. Here you see sugar cane. So plants are also an important source of sugar from sugar cane, beet sugar, maple syrup, and corn syrup. Humans have used plants as medicine for thousands of years. Although there has been a shift towards synthesized chemicals today, many pharmaceutical drugs are natural product drugs derived from plants and other sources from nature. People and cultures all over the world use medicinal plants in various preparations such as teas, tinctures, and extracts. In the United States, botanical dietary supplements are popular with many healthcare consumers. I think when a lot of people hear the word natural, they think natural means there are no chemicals. Well, natural means something different when you're talking to a chemist. In the chemical world, Natural products are chemical compounds derived from nature, as opposed to chemical compounds that have been synthesized in a lab from a starting compound. Um, so natural products could include chemical compounds extracted from plants, fungi, marine sources, and even snake venom. And snake venom actually has some really interesting and cool looking chemical compounds in it. And natural product drugs are pharmaceutical drugs made from natural products. Now I just want to point out when you are in the store and you see something labeled as natural, that doesn't mean it doesn't have any chemicals in it. You are made out of chemicals. Everything in the world is made out of chemicals. There's no such thing as something being chemical free. Okay, Even water is technically speaking a chemical. Anyway, back to natural product drugs, about 25% of drugs that are prescribed in the U.S. contain at least one ingredient derived from a plant. Although natural product drugs have declined as a source of new compounds compared to synthesized chemical compounds in recent decades. One of the big reasons is that it's very hard for pharmaceutical companies to patent a natural product drug um, and uh, it's a lot easier to patent a synthesized chemical compound. Um, we do think scientists have only explored uh, the dirt discovery potential of a small fraction of plant species found on Earth. So here we have mayapple, also known as uh, Podophyllum peltatum, that's the scientific name. Uh, this is a source of a natural product drug called podophyllotoxin. Uh, which is used as an antiviral to treat genital warts. 
Uh, in addition, it's the source of or protophyllotoxin is the starting compound from which etoposide and teneposide have been derived, and those are actually very important cancer drugs. So pharmacognosy is an applied science that combines biology, chemistry, ethnobotany, phytochemistry, and pharmacology in the search for biologically active compounds from nature, including plants like the mayapple you just saw. Um, here are some other examples of natural product drugs. So here you have someone removing bark from the Pacific yew tree. Pacific yew tree is also known as uh, Taxus brevifolia. Um, is the original source of the cancer drug known as Taxol or Paclitaxel, used to treat ovarian and breast cancer. Finding sources of Taxol has been a problem. It takes two full-grown trees to treat one patient with Taxol. So, uh, and trees do not survive if you remove their bark. Um, so this makes uh, this source of Taxol unsustainable over the long term because you can't grow trees fast enough to replace the ones that you're cutting down to manufacture Taxol. So other forms of Taxol production um, that are, are being used or explored include uh, plant cell culture and uh, semi-synthesis from starting compounds with a similar structure. So here we have the foxglove also known as Digitalis purpurea. Um, this is a beautiful plant. If you have it growing in your yard, do make sure that your dogs or your kids don't eat it because it is poisonous. So this kind of goes along with that old adage that what is uh, medicinal in one dose may be poisonous in another. And um, so this is a source of cardiac glycosides, in particular digoxin, uh, also known as lenoxin, which are used to treat congestive heart failure. And um, this plant has a long history of use as a medicinal plant going back to the Middle Ages. And in England, a, will, a man uh, a long time ago named William Withering discovered that it was an effective treatment for dropsy, which is what we used to call congestive heart failure. Um, of course, it's very difficult in back in the day for them to get the dosing right. It's a very fine line. Um, also, because partially the extracts they were making then, they didn't know for sure how much of the compound that was effective, you know, was in there. So there was a fine line between giving your patient enough to treat the dropsy and giving them too much and killing them. So thankfully, today we have drugs; we don't have to worry about it about that. All right, so here. We have aspirin. So aspirin chemically is actually called acetyl salicylic acid, uh, and this is a derivative from salicylic acid, which is originally isolated. Uh, salicylic acid is a derivative of salicin. So, so start with salicin. You can make salicylic acid from that, which is sometimes used as a uh, dermatological treatment, and then salicylic acid, uh, though it does have some pain relieving effects if you take it as a drink, it actually is very acidic and will burn a hole in your stomach. So uh, scientists from Germany figured out that you could add uh, an acetyl group onto it, making acetyl salicylic acid, which has the uh, pain reducing effects without the uh, harsh effects on the stomach. So that is um, aspirin. So salicin, to go backwards here, was originally derived from the willow tree by a scientist named Henry LaRoe. So botanical dietary supplements are products manufactured from plants or plants parts that are intended to supplement the diet and can be taken orally. They include pills, liquids, capsules, and tablets. So a lot of people think that dietary supplements are not regulated. Well, they actually are regulated under the Dietary Supplements and Health Education Act of 1994, more commonly called DSHEA. It's just the way that they are regulated is different from drugs. So in the United States, to sell a drug, 
put drug on the market here, you have to prove that it is safe and effective first. In the United States, you do not have to do that for dietary supplements. You don't have to prove that it's safe. You don't have to prove that it's effective. However, dietary supplements under Duche may not, manufacturers may not sell misbranded or adulterated products. They must include a list of ingredients on the label. Uh, they must follow good manufacturing practices and they must inform the FDA of any products that contain new dietary ingredients. And so the way it works is if the FDA th finds that a dietary supplement is unsafe, they must prove that and then remove it from the marketplace. So it's backwards from drugs, um, which have to be proven safe before they can be sold. So let's do go through some examples of botanical dietary supplements sold in the U.S. Uh, here we have the ephedra plant, ephedra sinica. This has been used uh, in Asia, throughout Asia, for thousands of years to treat symptoms of cold and flu. Uh, but around the 1990s or so, botanical dietary supplements containing ephedra alkaloids became very popular in the U.S. Uh, they were marketed for weight loss, enhanced athletic performance, and other uses. Uh, however, in 2004, the FDA banned the sale of dietary supplements containing ephedra alkaloids. And this was because there were adverse event reports of cardiovascular problems and even deaths attributed to this dietary supplement. So that can no longer be sold in the U.S. Alright, so here we have uh, St. John's wort. Its scientific name is Hypericum perforatum. This is a botanical dietary supplement commonly used to treat depression, menopausal symptoms, and other problems. The evidence is mixed. There is some evidence showing that it may be effective in treating depression, but much more research is needed. Um, it may be particularly effective in the treatment of mild to moderate depression, which is interesting because most uh, antidepressants are more effective at treating moderate or severe depression, not as effective for mild depression. However, much more research is needed to find out uh, about the efficacy and the dosing and etc. of St. John's wort. Uh, in addition, uh, it does have adverse interactions with medications including antidepressants, birth control pills, and digoxin. So if you are taking prescription drugs, you should talk to your doctor before you start taking any St. John's wort supplements. So here we have echinacea. Uh, there's several different species that are commonly used to treat cold symptoms including echinacea purpurea, echinacea angustifolia, and echinacea pallida. Uh, currently, scientific studies indicate that although echinacea may not decrease the duration of a cold, it may prevent a cold if you take it before you get sick. Uh, it does not appear to have any adverse interactions with medication, so short-term use appears to be safe in most people. Traditional medicine. So traditional medicine is used by indigenous cultures for the maintenance of health and the treatment and prevention of health problems. Uh, traditional medicine includes herbal medicines derived from plants. Some examples include traditional Chinese medicine or TCM, uh, Ayurvedic medicine from India, curanderismo herbal remedies used in Mexico and South Texas and um, elsewhere, and traditional herbal medicines used in Europe and the U.S. and elsewhere. So what are some other uses of plants? There are way too many uses of plants for me to list them all in this presentation. But I'll do a brief overview right now. First of all though, let's talk about two fields of study that cover this. Economic botany is the study of the uses of plants by people. Ethnobotany is a study of uses of plants by indigenous people for medicine and other purposes. So here we have the cotton plant. Uh, my grandfather grew cotton and um, this has been a very important plant economically here in Texas. Uh, the Cotton Bowl in Dallas was named after this plant because it was very important and throughout North Texas cotton was and still is a major crop and it is the source of uh, 
fibers for making clothing, cotton balls, and other items. Uh, other important fiber plants are, of course, flax, which is used to make uh, fibers to make linen. And hemp used to be grown all over the U.S. and an important source of fibers to make rope and clothing. And in fact, if you are driving around the Midwest to this day, you may see hemp plants just sprouting up by the side of the road. They don't call it weed for uh, nothing. Um, this is a cannabis species, but it does not have the pharmacological effects that one associates with marijuana. Um, so if you're driving around Kansas and you see some what look like marijuana plants growing by the side of the road, um, if you smoke those plants, it probably won't have much of an effect on you because it's probably hemp. Um, so let's see. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about rubber. So here you see the rubber tree and they have uh, slashed it because they're harvesting the rubber latex which is used to make items like latex gloves. Um, used to be widely made uh, used to make automobile tires, um, but today most automobile tires are made from synthetic rubber. However, natural rubber is still considered to be more durable than synthetic rubber. Okay, right, so here you see some gas pumps, and uh, we don't always think about it, but coal, coal, oil, and gas are made from deposits formed from ancient plants that died hundreds of millions of years ago, including ancient ferns and gymnosperms. Burning these fuels releases the carbon that was sequestered by those plants millions of years ago and does contribute to global warming. Here we see some wood. Uh, wood and charcoal are traditional sources of fuel that are still used by many people today. In some areas of the world, wood is burned faster than it can be replaced, leading to deforestation and erosion problems. Burning wood also produces carbon dioxide, uh, however, this can be offset by planting trees. In addition, burning wood and other forms of biomass releases less sulfur and ash than coal. Ethanol. Ethanol is made from fermenting sugars from feed corn. Uh, which makes it a renewable fuel. Uh, ethanol, however, produces about two-thirds as much energy as an equivalent amount of gasoline. And uh, one problem with ethanol production is that it does divort, divert corn away from the food supply, which can make food prices go up. So here you see some uh, lettuce packaged in plastic, and this is actually a bioplastic. So polylactic acid, or PLA, is a chemical compound derived from corn that is used to make bioplastics used in food, packaging, cups, and other products. Although PLA packaging is made from a renewable resource, it takes a very long time to break down in the environment and may not be a good addition to your compost pile. Finally, let's talk about phytoremediation. This is the use of plants to remove or mobilize heavy metals and other contaminants from water, sludge, soil, or sediments. And one example of phytoremediation is the John Bucker Sands Wetland uh, Project, uh, which is in North Texas. And uh, you can visit the uh, John Bunker Sands Wetland Center. Uh, and this is where uh, we actually use plants to clean drinking water. For North Texans to use. And at the same time, it provides a home for wildlife. Pleasure. Of course, plants bring pleasure to humans in many different forms. For example, landscaping and gardening. Uh, and um, of course, recreational drugs uh, like marijuana, I mentioned earlier. Teas and uh, my favorite, coffee. Uh, mate, chocolate, tobacco all come from plants. Uh, thank you for listening to my presentation.